Phew. I finally escaped from my dinner break. Hey, Gavin. Rough day. Would you mind picking up some powdered milk from the store on the way home? What? Me? Yeah, I've been really busy looking after Jake and doing the housework today, so I was hoping you could pick some up. The store is on your usual route anyway, so it'd only take you a few minutes, right? Why can't you do it? To tell you the truth, Jake's been in a rotten mood since he woke up. We went shopping first thing, and he threw a huge tantrum right in the middle of the supermarket. I really don't want to have to go through that again. And you didn't buy it then? You mean you forgot? Yep, sorry. God damn it! Are you telling me you're not even capable of buying powdered milk properly? I'm going to be exhausted by the time I get off work, Jane. You know I work long shifts. I'm really sorry, honey. I think I was still half asleep when I went out this morning. You serious? You've got some nerve. Are you trying to say you're sleep deprived? You wouldn't try walking a mile in my shoes? Huh? Why would you be sleep deprived? You get at least eight hours, don't you? Cause that little twerp wakes me up crying three times an hour! Why does he cry so much? It can't be normal. Are you sure you're looking after him properly? Of course I am. Why do you think I sleep in the living room? That way, I can get up as soon as he starts, give him some milk, and rock him until he calms down. I sleep on the couch precisely to avoid waking you up and messing with your sleep, Gavin. I know you need to be at your best to perform at work. Well, it's not working because he's driving me insane. I feel like I don't get a wink of sleep some nights. What's worse, he never stops. You know what? I'm just going to come out and say it. The kid's torturing me. He's a baby, Gavin. Babies cry. If it's that bad, why don't you try wearing earplugs? Why should I have to go to such extreme measures? Why can't you just do something about it? You're his mom for crying out loud. Moms are supposed to be good at kid stuff. Are you sure you're rocking him properly? I do it just like the midwives taught me. My sister's kiss nothing like Jake when she's at my folks' place. She's quiet as a mouse. Why does our Jake have to be so disrespectful? Oh, come on, Gavin. Disrespectful? He's just a baby. He doesn't wake you up on purpose. He's also not a robot with an off button, unfortunately. Every baby's personality is different. Some cry a lot, some don't. It's really that simple. Well, my mom said I was every parent's dream. She never had to wake up in the night to calm me down. Does he get this from your side of the family? So what if he does? What difference would it make? Jake cries a lot, and that's all there's to it. As long as he's healthy, I'm happy. But I'm telling you, I'm stressed out and sleep deprived because of his crying. I can't go on like this. You need to do something. Look, I'm sorry, Gavin. I'll try harder. I'll do my best to get up even more quickly. Hopefully then, I can calm him down before he wakes you. That's all I want to hear. I can't keep tolerating it. It's beyond a joke now. You might be able to take naps in the middle of the day whenever you feel like it, but some of us have to work. Jeez, what kind of life do you think I lead? I can't afford to take naps either. I might not work in an office, but it's not like I don't have a job. At least your job ends. I'm on the clock till my head hits the pillow. I can't even do the housework for five minutes without I'm grumbling about something. Do you really think I have the luxury of taking midday naps? Surely you do some days. Not like me. I have to work every day after he wakes me up with his blubbering every night. Our positions are not the same. The only reason you two have a roof over your heads to make all that racket in the first place is because I'm constantly out slaving away at the office. I said I'm sorry. That's fine. All I ask is that you understand. Make sure you pay more attention tonight. I won't tolerate being woke up again. I am the man of this house, and my sleep schedule is important. If he starts crying, you're going to leap off that sofa faster than you sing Bolt and calm him down pronto. What would you do if I collapsed with sleep deprivation-induced exhaustion? 
The family would be finished. Finish, I tell you. Right. All right. I'm gonna take a nap. Go buy the powdered milk yourself. Mark my words. I won't let that kid in your laziness drain any more of my energy. Gavin, what's going on? Why is the front door locked? Let me in. You shut your goddamn mouth! I want you out of this apartment! You can't be outside in the hallway either. Jake's crying will echo even louder than it did in his bedroom. You'll get reported by the neighbors. So let me in! You had your chance. To calm it down straight away when he cried. But you did it, didn't you? He cried, he cried, and he cried some more. And guess what? He woke me up again. I am done with this crap. Leave me in peace to sleep. I didn't get a wink of sleep last night either. You think I enjoy this? My life's a lot harder than yours. You can always catch up on sleep during the day. But I have to go to work. A bad night's sleep is practically a death sentence for me. Dragging myself out to the office every day was exhausting enough before we had the demon brat. But now, now I'm reaching levels of exhausting previously unimagined. Oh, well, you do nothing but lays around all day on the sofa. Bad night's sleep, no problem. Three hour nap. I should start calling you Snorlax. I do nothing but laze around on the sofa? Oh my god. Gavin, I can't even believe what I'm reading here. And demon brat? Do not call your son a demon, you jerk! You're his father and you should be more understanding! Who kicks their wife and kid out just because their son was crying? You do know it's the dead of winter? Have you lost your mind? What's the problem, Snorlax? I gave you the car keys, didn't I? Stop calling me Snorlax! What do you mean the car keys? I put them in your bag. I feel bad if you froze to death. Wow. Are you saying me and your newborn son have to sleep outside in the car? Bingo! The car has a heater. Plus, if you live in the car, you can take Jake out for a drive whenever you feel like it. You can get free hot water from the machine at the store you can make his milk with. Wow, come to think of it, you're still gonna have it easy. You don't get husbands much kinder than me, you know. I surprise myself what a slow guy I am sometimes. This is kindness? Would you rather I blew you out on the streets with nothing? Cause I'd be well within my rights given how pissed off I am about this kid's endless crying. You're lucky I'm so merciful. I can't believe this. Gavin, you're a disgrace. Watch your mouth, bitch! You do not talk to the man of the house like that! Anyway, you're one to talk. You let that kid cry all night despite knowing full well how exhausted I am. Wee! 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 It's all I freaking hear with you guys around. None of this would be happening if you just did your freaking job and looked at them improperly during the day. If a kid cries a lot, it's a parent's fault. But you're his parent, too. Sure I am, but you're the one who spends the most time with him. It's your fault. Let me guess, 100% my fault? Babies cry, it's just what they do. What else can I say? There's nothing you can do about it when they're his age. Sure, I can calm him down sometimes, but there are times when no matter how much I hold him, no matter how much I feed him, he doesn't stop. Well, learn how to control him. How am I supposed to control a baby? Besides, I look after him and do everything around the house all on my own. Have you ever come back from work to a dirty house? To an unwashed plate? A stain on the floor? The answer is no. Do you know why that is? Because I do everything I possibly can to make sure you come to a nice, clean home where you can put your feet up and relax after work because I know how hard you work. Good job, babe. Want a medal? 
your stay-at-home housewife. Obviously, it's a given that you're going to keep the house clean. It's like be like me, bragging about filing your report at work. <laughs> it is not a given. I have to look after Jake, too. Do you know how hard it is to keep on top of everything all on my own? No, I don't want a medal, but I do want you to at least understand that I don't have it as easy as you seem to think. Well, I support this family all on my own. You should be helping me out more with Jake. I've been asking you ever since he was born, but you never listen. Would it really hurt to spend some time with your son every now and then? I can't. I have a job. Just because you have a job doesn't mean you don't have to spend any time with your son. It's not like I'm asking you to change his diapers or anything. I just wish you would spend more time with him. Aren't you interested in getting to know him at all? I gave up on asking you lately because I thought I was wasting my time. But I can't let go of it. You absolutely should be helping out more with your son. I feel like a single mother. God, would you shut up already? You're so boring! I thought I might be able to finally get some sleep today, but now I'm so riled up it's going to take hours to calm down. You have no idea how much you rustle my jimmies, woman! You're serious about making us sleep in the car, aren't you? If you want to come back inside, you gotta apologize first. <laughs> when you're on your knees begging for forgiveness on the doorstep, maybe then I'll consider it. I'll pass. I'll sleep in the car. Great. Fill my gas tank up while you're at it. You better not get the leather dirty either. My mom and dad bought us that car to help out with Jake. It was still a gift, and I drive it the most, which makes it my car. <laughs> I see. You better not wake me up again. I'm switching my phone off. I want you both back in the car where you belong before I get home from work tomorrow evening. I don't want to see you or the demon scratch face again. I just got home. You back in the car yet? <laughs> what? 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 What do you mean, what? I asked out of kindness because I'm worried about you. You should be more grateful. Anyway, guess what? I slept like a baby last night. I knew it was the demon brat making me feel like crap all this time. I just knew it. I feel great today. Full of energy. Are you done? What's got into you? Don't get cocky with me, woman. <laughs> You'll start showing me the proper respect if you want to come back inside the house anytime soon. <laughs> you must get cold in the car. Sorry yet. I'm the one who has to say sorry? Obviously. Go on. Apologize. I'm sorry for making the demon brat cry. <laughs> If you do, I'll forgive you and let you back inside. What the hell did you do to my daughter? Huh? Don't give me, huh? This is Jane's mother. Um, uh, Jane, are you playing a prank on me? Your parents live hours away from us. How can you be with your mom? <laughs> Try harder. Jane set off for our house in the car last night. She arrived this morning. What? She tells me you kicked her and Jake out and forced them to live in the car? Because Jake was crying all night, of all things? You're the biggest scumbag I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. Did Jane really drive all the way out to you? That's what I just said, isn't it? Her and Jake will be living with me and my husband from now on. I'll never let her go back to you. You mean she's not going to live here with me anymore? I'm sorry! I'm really, really sorry! I apologize for everything. Please, can I have her back? I got carried away! I can't have my wife living this far away from me! Your wife? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're getting a divorce. 
Devoris! Are you joking? You're joking, right, Edith? P please I said I'm sorry! Do not, Edith, me boy. I won't be your mother-in-law for much longer. And you certainly won't get any sympathy from me after what you did. I'm sorry. You kicked your wife and your newborn son out of your apartment and forced them to live in the car in the middle of winter while she was still recovering from childbirth. Do you think either of us can forgive you for that? Do you know how cold it is outside? It's December, you buffoon. The temperature is negative five degrees on a good night. You're right. I've been an idiot. I'm sorry. Do you really mean that? Or are you just saying it because she won't tolerate it anymore? I mean it. I behave childishly. But I was stressed out too, I swear. I was physically and mentally exhausted. I did things I wouldn't normally do. I know you both had a lot on your plate, Gavin, but that doesn't justify what you did. I know it's not a competition, but Jane hardly had it easy either, you know. She barely got three hours sleep most nights herself. Raising a child isn't as easy as you seem to think. Not to mention doing all the housework on top of it. Would it have hurt you so much to have helped her out sometimes? She got no recognition for her efforts whatsoever. To the contrary, you actively mistreated her. I know I messed up. I'm really, really, really sorry! Jake might be your son, but you have no right to be a father. You'll never see him or Jane ever again. Hey, Jane, how are you? Amazing! I'm a million times happier than I was living with you. I'm really sorry about how I treated you last week, babe. No two ways about it. I was out of line. I've been working real hard for you and Jake this last week. Huh? Am I supposed to know what you're talking about? So I told my mom you said you were divorcing me and took Jake to your mom's. She rushed over to the house immediately to find out why. I figured there was no use trying to hide any of it, so I told her everything. She went crazy at me when she found out what I did to you. I've never been yelled at so hard in my life. Not only that, but she decided she was going to stay at the house to teach you some discipline. Which means I got yelled at and ordered to do the chores every day when I got home from work. Wow, really? I see. Your mom did all that for me? She told me I need to learn just how difficult it can be to run a household, and boy did I learn. I understand why what I did was so horrible now, and I'm truly sorry. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. You were working so hard, and all I did was throw it back in your face. Cooking, cleaning, looking after Jake, grocery shopping, taking him to appointments. I had no idea you did so much. I'm glad you finally realized. Does this mean you'll forgive me? Can we just forget about the whole divorce thing? Just because I'm pleased you finally realized I wasn't lounging around on the sofa all day doesn't mean I changed my mind about the divorce. What? Why? I just did the housework for a whole freaking week! Oh, want a medal? No, I just want to know I get it now, baby! I understand! I'll never give you a hard time again. I'll help out around the house. I even decided to try and be more patient when Jake cries at night. I want to change, baby. I'm serious about that. I'm pleased to hear it. I take it you mean you want to change for your next wife? Because I don't want you anymore. Gah. So you're going to go through with the divorce? Did nothing I just said to you make you think about changing your mind for even a second? Bingo! I just got done talking with my lawyer. Let's get all the legal stuff out of the way ASAP, shall we? Just wait a sec! I don't want a divorce! I want you, me, and our son all to live happily together! Too late. It doesn't have to be! 
Jake's tiny. He'll never remember any of this. If you forgive me, we can start over and really make it work this time. There's only one slight problem with that. I don't forgive you. Or rather, I can't possibly forgive you. You let me carry on day in, day out, more sleep deprived than a doctor on a 24 hour shift at my physical and mental breaking point for months. No matter how many times I asked you to come help me with Jake, the answer was always no. But if I didn't keep on top of the housework because I was so busy with him, even for just one second, you lost it and berated me. Living with you was like being in hell. Jane, I'm so sorry. You might think you can make it all go away with an apology. But I'll never forget what you did to me for as long as I live. On top of never helping, you actually had the nerve to suggest the way I was rocking Jake was wrong or that he had something wrong with him. You called him a demon brat. You said he was disrespectful for crying. You abused both of us. That cherry on top? Being evicted from my own home and forced to raise our son in the car. Not only can I not forgive you for my own personal reasons, but I can't forgive you as Jake's mother. My head was in a bad place back then. All that nighttime crying made me neurotic, or how to put this, I think I had a mental breakdown. You think I didn't know it was bothering you? I wanted to help. You say you had a mental breakdown but you still managed to go out drinking with your buddies as normal. Then after I finally managed to get Jake off to sleep, you come back at 2 a.m., drunk, out of your mind, singing at the top of your lungs. You were the one disturbing the peace, not him. I know, babe. I've been an idiot. I'm a changed man now, I swear. Please come home. No chance. Oh, yeah. I have some more news for you. You need to be out of the house within a month. Huh? The house belongs to my uncle. Did you forget? The only reason we were able to live there so cheaply was thanks to my family. I didn't know that, babe. But please, you can hardly expect me to find a new place on such short notice. That's why I'm giving you a month. It's in my name. So I could tell you to leave now if I wanted to, and you wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. Are you not listening to me here, babe? I'm really, really, really sorry! It's true what they say, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. I walked the mile in your shoes, and now I know how hard things were for you. How you barely had time to sleep with the pressure of all your responsibilities. I tried cooking too. It wasn't the easiest, let me tell ya. I have a newfound respect to appreciation for you, babe. I think you're amazing. I can't tell you how sorry I am. I'm disgusted with myself. You deserve better than how I treated you. I don't want to see your faces again. Remember when you said that to me when you booted me and Jake out and forced us to live in the car? I just said that in the heat of the moment. Whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. Whether you meant it or not, I'm done with you. I am so, so, so done. You had endless opportunities to put things right before it came to this. You're the one who treated all my attempts at discussion with disdain. Jane, please come home. I'm sorry. I never thought you'd divorce me. I've been a fool. I was out of control. I think I needed something like this to bring it back down to reality. I'm sorry. I'm busy. I don't want to hear any more of your pathetic apologies. If you have anything of substance to say, it can go through my lawyer. How can you be too busy to discuss our marriage? That's rich considering you dismiss me every time I try to discuss it with you until now. Our marriage is over. Not so nice when the shoe's on the other foot, huh? I'm done listening to you. You've tired me out enough already. How about you get lost and let me relax for a change. After that, we hashed out the particulars of the divorce through our lawyers. He begged and pleaded with me to reconsider until the last. But his desperate appeals were crushed beneath the weight of the righteous indignations of both of our moms, who, needless to say, were disgusted with him for the way he behaved. 
Eventually, he signed the divorce papers through gritted teeth. If he was so desperate for me not to divorce him, it kind of makes you wonder why he wasn't just nice to me in the first place, right? I guess my ex-husband is just the kind of person who has to lose something completely before he realizes how much it meant to him. There's no doubt in my mind that if I forgave him, he'd be back up to his old tricks before long. How do I know, you ask? Because even when discussing the divorce to our lawyers, he still made thinly veiled attempts at justifying his behavior. Like saying he kicked us out because he was struggling mentally. It was at that moment that I knew I'd make the right decision. He wasn't sorry. He just wanted to make me think he was. I doubt he even knows what it means to feel remorse. After I gave him his marching orders from the house, he found a shabby old apartment in a desolate, run-down part of town. He messaged me the other day, complaining that the walls are as thin as cardboard, and told me he gets woken up at least five times a night by his neighbors, who sound like total party animals. <laughs> oh, the irony. He told me he's struggling to keep on top of the housework, and isn't sure how much longer he can cope. I can't block him because he pays me child support every month, but needless to say, I wasn't interested in anything he had to say, and I left all his messages on red. He can carry on living, tormented by the pain of regret over what he did to me forever for all I care. My parents were super cooperative when it came to looking after Jake when I moved back in with them. And I can now proudly announce that I'm no longer sleep deprived. Gavin's mom even sends him presents sometimes. I feel blessed to have such an amazing support network. And honestly, my stress levels are virtually non-existent now. It's amazing what wonders not living with a guy who treats you like dirt can work on the mind. <laughs> I'll never take any of it for granted, and I intend to carry on working hard, raising my son, while letting all of the amazing people in my life know how much I appreciate them. I'm thinking about starting work again the year after next. But until then, I'm gonna dedicate all my time to raising Jake. Here's to the future. Let's make it a good one, folks.